everybody, wherever you may be, from coast to coast, and sea to shine and sea. Welcome back to Ham Radio Live, a show about radio for people who love radio. In this show, we're going to talk about that Doug on S meter, how to set it up right so you can get the right reading and what it means. From the Four Winds, welcome back. When we got no choice. Yeah, you can always change the channel. All the girls and boys. Oh, sorry, I misunderstood. Man, all that noise. We have Alice Cooper today. Remember this at the summertime? Remember? Got ready when we got out of school? Everybody got out of school and they played this song. Better go to the crow's nest first. Here we go. So that was Alice Cooper. You should see his sister, James Fenimore. <laughs> the angry hams. <laughs> you know, you got to get the angry hams in. Welcome. It's Monday, the 31st day of January, 2022. Welcome back to Ham Radio Live. Show about radio for people who love radio. If you love the radio hobby, it could be ham, shortwave, CB, DX, AM, FM, whatever. This is a good place for you. We hang out, we talk about radio right around noon Pacific, unless everything falls off like the, today did, where everything went wrong and I had to restart the computer. No! You know, that happens sometimes. You know, it's been one of those days for me, too. Let me start out by welcoming people from all over the world. First, Chris, all the way from the UK. Welcome, my friend from Scotland. Me, me. First one in today, Chris. Welcome. It's good to see you, mate. Good evening to you. Adam O'Cala, Florida, November Yankee 5 Echo. Welcome to the middle part of Florida. Welcome to the show. Remember the Bob Kersey WIFI? Will Myers from the state of Wisconsin, who has a hex beam on the ground picking up signals and does well. Kilo Alpha A Golf India Mike, welcome to the show. Cliff Bolt from the state of Virginia. Whiskey Delta 4, Oscar Bravo Papa. Andy Bronson from the UK. Mike 7, X Ray Tango Tango. Las Vegas, Nevada is in the house. Hi, Gary. Whiskey 9, Papa Papa Yankee. Andy New from Bristol in the UK. Mike Seven, Charlie Union, November. We've got Ron here from Canada. Hi, Ron. Good YouTube channel, by the way. Victor Alpha 3, Foxtrot Union, Charlie. From the German frontier, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, it's pretty darn cold where he's at, but he's here. Delta Kilo 5, Oscar, November, Victor. That's Gunter all the way in Germany. You'll love him. He keeps the comment section going, and he's really good at working portable, too. All the way from Oregon with love to Germany. Welcome, Gunter, DK5ONV, to the show today. Welcome, mate. Mm -hmm. Robert Levine. Hi, Bob. Good to see you. Welcome to the show. It's good to see you. Steve is here from the UK. Mike 7 Indy Whiskey Hotel. Rod is here from Pennsylvania Whiskey 3. Mike Papa Golf and Robert's call sign up in Canada, by the way. Victor Alpha 3, Juliet Indy November. Mike Oswald from Kirkland, Washington. Hi, Mike. Good to see you. Alpha Alpha 7, Mike Oscar. We got GMCG. That's a first timer. Welcome. Mike Mike 3, Golf Quebec Tango, Gordon, good evening, mate. Good to see you. Thanks for coming this evening all the way from the UK. The whole purpose of why we're here is to help you get into ham radio. If you don't know how, contact a national radio club like the Radio Society of Great Britain. Wonderful group. They'll help you get your license. And they'll, what they'll do is you tell them where you're located, right? You send them an email. They're going to send you an email back. Once they know where you're located, they're going to tell you, okay, this ham radio club is close to you. Contact them. Then you contact the club. They're going to help you get your license. It's it's not as hard as you think. It really isn't. In most countries, Morse code's been taken out of the requirement to get your license. So don't make that the excuse. Just contact a national club. Let them send you a club. Then you can get to know and get yourself on the air. www.rsgb.org. That's www.rsgb.org. may have heard the show on WRMI. I host CQ Calling. They're powered by ICOM. ICOM for the love of ham radio. Love the show. It's a lot of fun to do. Shows on Thursdays around the world. Friday as well to uh, the folks in Europe. So looking forward to the show this week. And this is a little segment that's part of that show. If you want to email me here at Ham Radio Live, please feel free. You can reach me at CQ, Ham Radio Live, gmail.com. Let's get to the weather 
It's powered by ICOM. ICOM for the love of ham radio. Here is your A1A. It's beautiful today. Great conditions. Better than yesterday. Look at the backside of the sun. Look at that. We've got a lot of sunspots that are surviving, and they're going to hit the front of the sun later this week, early next. Coronal holes, nothing really hurting us right now. We're in good conditions. The sun's been pretty stable right there humming around a sea, which is why our conditions are so good. K-Index, this is where our noise floors are. Currently at K2, which is really good. That means it's quiet on the noise floors. You don't have as much static on the, especially the lower frequencies. The MUF currently at a boulder 130, so it's up five from yesterday. Solar number, that's the sunspot number count, not the amount of sunspots. It's a formula of sunspot groups as well as sunspots, and they have a formula to come up with the solar number. The higher the solar number, the better. Right now it's at 70. K index is at two, that's quiet. A index is at eight, and we've got a positive BZ latitude, which is really good, 445 Point eight kilometers per second. And I'm telling you, folks, the HF conditions they show here are better than that. They are. You'll get 10 today in the Northern Hemisphere. You really will. MUF's currently around the world right now. Alaska's already at 15.21. Boulder, 27.18. And believe me, 10 meters is open in the North American continent right now. And that would be, you know, probably from about the Canadian border south. But Canada, hang in there. It's coming. Ascension Island, 39.8 megahertz. Hermana, South Africa, 15.98. Athens, Greece at 8.5 megahertz. Nive Island, 31.6 megahertz. Current Kilo Charlie 2 golf map. And there it is. 29 megs all the way from literally the Canadian border south. Look at that. That's amazing. Just amazing. If you're in Alaska, you're still on 20 meters, but, you know, let's see how high that, that drifts. It should come up towards Canada and way up maybe towards Alaska later in the afternoon. All the way in us in the South American continent, you're on 10 meters, everywhere from 30 to 40 megahertz there currently in South America. In the European continent, way over there in Spain, they're at 15 megs still, 14 megahertz if you're in France, but you're getting on to 40 meters here shortly. And look at how wide open it is all the way through Asia. Asia. Great calls all the way from literally Iceland into the Far East and down towards Malaysia, in towards Australia. If you're in Perth right now, you're just about approaching 20 meters already. Gold Coast of Australia, 13 megahertz, down towards Melbourne, 10. But 25 megahertz is probably around, well, it's right around New Zealand right now, so it's coming your direction. Your forecast for today for the HF bands, ham radio voice bands during the day, 20, 17, 15, 12, and definitely some big 10-meter openings in the north. Equatorial and south latitudes, 20, 17, 15, 12, and 10. CB radio skip, you've got it in the Northern Hemisphere. It'll last for, I think, a few hours this afternoon for 11 meter folks, and all will be great in the mid and south latitudes on 11 meters. Data folks, 30 to 10, all latitudes should be wide open. You'll make some great FT8 calls today. Nighttime handband openings, 160, 80, 75, 60, 40, 30. Best DX in the north will be on 40 and 80 meters, 20 meters in the south for about 90 minutes after sunset. But check your MUFs at gray line and work it. You'll make some good calls today. Shortwave bands during the daytime, 31, 25, 22 in the 19 meter band. Shortwave nighttime, 120, 90, 75, 60, 49, 41, 31, 25, 22, and the 19 meter band open to folks in Australia, South Africa, and all over the Southern Hemisphere till about 90 minutes after sunset. And the signals will just fade away, but they're there. And there's some good work. There's some good stuff on 19 right now. Got a question of the day. And by the way, we're changing the format a little bit on Tuesdays. We're going to do something called Tell Me Something Good Tuesdays. This is my wife's idea, and I loved it. I thought, Karen, you hit a winner there. That's a good one. Yeah. Karen said, why don't you do a show where you let the people that watch dictate the show? I thought, yes, good idea. Instead of doing a topic question, we'll just let it go wide open. It'll be like a round table. Talk about whatever you want to. So it's going to be Tell Me Something Good Tuesday starting tomorrow here. Thanks to my wife, Karen. Yeah. I hope you enjoy it. should be fun. It'll be every Tuesday devoted to all of your comments, and you'll just drive the show. Today's topic question, what's the one country or continent you want to work? I know I'm going to probably get a lot of North Korea. Mine's Iceland. Uh, sorry, mine would be Antarctica. I'd love to work Antarctica or South Africa. Hard to work from the Northwest, so it'd be kind of fun to work with them. Yeah, it'd be fun to work that way. We're also going to talk today about the S-meter. 
You know, when we look at a radio, it seems pretty simple, right? Even even the, the, the radios that are older, they you know, right, they have themselves an S meter. Whatever, you know, radio you're looking at. Could be something like this. And there's the S meter right there at the top, right? And that's your signal report. It's how you, you compute it. But there's ways to use that S meter and ways to understand how to set it right. Okay. We're also going to talk about preamps. Why you use preamps where okay i hope you enjoy the show today let's catch up with your comments around the world and thank you again for coming this this humbles me you know this is just fun for me this is me going into a studio having some fun for an hour and just interacting with people from five continents that's a lot you know what that means a lot to me so please understand when i say thank you i truly do mean it thank you thank you very much uh, Gunter, real good afternoon exam. Uh, sorry, real good antenna even picks up signals. It's still unboxed. Yeah, that'd be like, like, um, um, my mind just went blank. Oh my gosh. There's so many people now that come. Yeah, it's Will Myers, a hex beam on the ground. He's picking up the world with this thing. It's great. Oh, Rob, you're going to love it. You're going to love that antenna. You really will. It'll be great for you. And uh, Addy, welcome back. Addy Golf 6, Alpha Delta. Welcome back. Good to see you. Have you seen the SFI Day 130? Just talked about it. Yep. Great signals today. Good, good stuff. We'll be on the radio today. Kim Cheney, Kilo Oscar for India, Papa India, Brandenburg, Kentucky. Welcome and good to see you. It's nice to be part of your day today. Thank you. Rod Claire, Kilo 7, Lima Alpha Papa is here. Welcome to the show. Nice to see you. Mike in Jacksonville, Kilo Delta 2, CX Ray Delta. Hello and good afternoon, my friend. Thank you very much for coming. Um, let me see. You're talking. A lot of people are talking to Gunter today. Andy talks about 10 meters. It's open here too, mate. Take a listen. This is 10. <laughs> now it's not going to be on. They just finished that uh, that uh, DEC, what is it called? The HF Activity Group. But it was just humming right along here in the Northwest. So, yeah, good conditions today. Absolutely good conditions. In Scotland, Chris said VK has been booming in on 10 the last few mornings. That's great. And our conditions are fantastic. Today's the day to turn your radio on. Hammer shortwave, even medium wave DX. This, this affects, I don't know if you know this, this also affects... The medium wave band, too. When you've got really good conditions like this, less static, better skip, you've got a better condition for even uh, folks that like to work on the medium wave bands. Hi, Ron. November 8, Whiskey Charlie Romeo. Welcome. I do want to do a quick thank you out there. I really do. I had a really nice email from Gary. Gary uh, got a hold of me this morning, and it was the first email I saw. I was barely awake. <laughs> you know, Have you ever had those mornings where you're like sleepwalking when you first wake up? <laughs> That was me. Greg, and I'm going to make the name wrong. It's, I'm sorry, Wishpeli? I think it's Wishpeli. And I probably got it wrong. Greg, his call sign is Whiskey, sorry, Kilo Alpha 8, Whiskey Papa Golf. So Kilo Alpha 8, Whiskey Papa Golf. Talked about this today. And we did one on the, um, on the S-meters before. But we're going to revisit that. And also talk to you about S-meter. And, and it can also mess you up a little bit if you don't do it right. You know, there's a there's a key to it. We'll talk about it. Uh, and thank you, Cliff. It's nice to see you. Thanks for coming and asking for a thumbs up. That's nice of you. Thank you. Alpha Papa 2, F-L-Y as in fly. Pakistan's in the house. Wow. Wow. It's really nice to meet you. Thank you for coming today. I mean that. It means a lot to have you join us. Comment. Please join us in the comment section. It's a pleasure and an honor to have you on today's show. Thank you so much for being here today. Um, let me see here. Will Myers says, right now I'm trying to make contact with stations in Ireland and Scotland. I've tried, but no luck so far. I know that uh, neither are exotic, but I've been to Ireland and plan to go to Scotland. Yeah, and that hex beam is going to work really, really well. Steve Ash, welcome. Whiskey Bravo 7, Victor Eckler, Quebec. How goes the stream? I think we're kind of hanging in. I think we're all right. We're doing okay today. Steve, Mike 7, Indy Whiskey Hotel. Got. To, I'd love to work Oceana. So, like, to get all the... So all that ticked off to get all continents. Yeah, Oceania's fun. It is. And, and from here, it's for me, it's good to work because it's easy. For me, it's Europe, right? Europe and Africa. Hard to work from the Northwest without a directional. But yeah, that's good. Thank you, Steve, for your comment. Keep them coming, everybody. It's good. That's good. Gunter, dk 5 and b has not worked Pakistan yet. Some India context, but still no Pakistan. And from Pakistan, by the way, 
This is really nice. I'm so glad you're here today. Thank you for coming. This is really nice. This is really nice. Uh, comment, would love to work. And you know what? If you want to get your ham radio license, please let us know in the comment section, okay? It'd be great to have you, all right? Um, Mike Oswald from the Pacific Northwest, Central or Northern Africa continent. Yep, hard to make that call. Really is. Northern Europe would be nice too. For us here up in the Northwest, that's the tough call. It goes over the North Pole and down. It's a tough call to make for us. Directional antennas make all the difference in the world there. Or if you have really good propagation, you can make the call. For example, Mike, during CQ Worldwide, when everybody was on the band everywhere, there were calls to be made in Europe, but most likely they had directionals. So hang in there, my friend. Roger McKeon, first timer and welcome. Kilo Juliet 7, Lima Lima X-Ray. Welcome to the show, Roger. Nice to meet you. Thank you for coming to Ham Radio Live today. Wow, can't believe how many people are here. This is a wonderful group. Martin is here from Holland, Papa Echo 9, Tango India Golf. Thank you so much. And, and thank you. No, the honor truly is mine. Thank you. Andy Bronson, Mike 7, X-Ray Tango, Tango. Larry, for your 500th show, I reckon you should do a total live on-air evening. See if we can pick you up and others. Plus, Uncle Gunter can get, can get cold. <laughs> That's funny. You know, I, I, I got a hold of Ray Novak this morning at ICOM because show 400 is coming. And I, and I said to him, I said, Ray, you know, it looks like it's going to work out really well that um, show 400 will be maybe with you because if I can time it right, it'll be right about Hemcation. And that would be if Ray has the time to, to be able to have Ray as a special guest on show 400. So that's 15 shows away. It's hard to believe how many, how many of these have done. And Along the way, all the changes and all the all the gifts that all of you have given me, I, I mean this sincerely when I say thank you. Thank you for being part of the, the ride for me. Hi, good to see you, Don. Golf 7 India, Mike Oscar. Says, hi, Larry. Hope all is well with you. It is. We got a surgery date scheduled for the back. We did. Today they called. That was part of the reason I was late today. They called it like 10 minutes before the show. And I was so excited. I went down, downstairs really quick to the phone with Karen and told her she's listening. I couldn't believe it. It's going to be in April. So, man, I am looking forward to getting that done and feeling better. So, yeah, good stuff coming. That's good. That's good. Uh, Kim Cheney, uh, talking Gunter's Keep in the comment section going. So, there we're going well. And, Roger, you're welcome. Thank you for coming today to the show. In Ham Radio News, digital amateur digital communication. Sorry, that was bad. Amateur radio digital communication grants continue. They're going another $900,000. But it's cool. It's going to permit the Internet Archive to build a digital library of amateur radio and communications. It's going to be an online open access resource that preserves the vital resources, both past, present, and future, that document the history of amateur radio and communications. It's going to be pretty cool. Well, more information on this, you can find this on the American Radio Relay League website. From the RSGB, this is the time of year when volunteers can step forward for election at the RSGB 2022 AGM. There are two elected board director vacancies. Now, you want more information on it. This You've got to complete your application and get it in, whether you're nominating someone or you want to be that someone to the RSGB. It needs to be in by 2359 on January 31st. So it has to be by tonight. Make sure you please get that in if you want to be a part of this. Okay. Amateur radio in Tonga emergency. Many radio amateurs have expressed concern over the situation in the kingdom of Tonga after that volcano eruption. The IARU region three representative says that amateur radio in Tonga is difficult as there are currently no HF operators and few transceivers in storage. An emergency communication network may be set up in the amateur radio service in the future. Operators have been asked to keep the IARU Region 3 emergency frequencies clear of 3.6 megahertz, 7.110 megahertz, 14.3 megahertz, 18.160 megs, and 21.360 megahertz. Amateurs may maintain a watch on those frequencies at least when propagation is open to that region to lend a hand if you can. Finally, today is the day the National Radio Center at Bletchley Park reopened. How about that? Now, if you want a free entry voucher to get into Bletchley, just download it from the RCB Membership Services website. You can get the, that started actually yesterday, but you can get your tickets again to see Bletchley Park, which should be a whole bunch of fun. Got some great guests coming. Coming up on February 12th, Charlie from Red Summit RF in Arizona joins us. His call sign, November Juliet 7 Victor. Good talk about great ways we can work portable in 2022. 
the following Saturday on the 19th. Jeff Doran, November Juliet 2, Union Sierra. Good talk about beverage antennas. This could be a good one. This could be a great show. He's a retired police captain out of New Jersey, and he's got a really good YouTube channel, too. And he's got wonderful beverage antennas strung in four directions. Jeff's going to talk about that. You'll learn more about how to really make your receive antenna sing on the 19th of February at 20 UTC. The following Saturday, which is the 26th of February, our, our mate Tom Poyard, Alpha 92 Golf Whiskey in Bahrain, going to be here to talk about using a very affordable adjustable whip antenna to not only work the daytime bands, but also possibly work nighttime as well. Yep, you put a loading coil on it, you can make it work night. That's going to be on the 26th of February at 20 UTC. Following Saturday, March 5th, the Smoke and Ape joins us. From his YouTube lair, please join us, March 5th, 20 UTC. We're going to talk about antennas and a whole bunch more. We're looking forward to having the ape join us on that wonderful Saturday. So, there you go. Let me catch up with all of your comments, and we'll get back to everything. Steve, thank you. Yeah, I'm grateful because this, you know, I can't even sit still. I mean, I've got a big ice bag back here, and, you know, you lose sleep. It's just one of those things. I mean, backs are Back is kind of, I think they, the back and the neck or the two areas are really can mess you up. So I'm really grateful. That's one time I'm grateful that, the, you know, <laughs> that's going to be okay. Rod in uh, Salem, Oregon. Ask Ray when the slow boat comes in with my 9700. Well, it's probably up the coast of California, but I comes doing their best. You know that. You know that. I went, I went to the store. Just to give you an idea of how bad the, the supply chain is, right? Something really simple, right? Now, I go in to get distilled water because I use a CPAP at night, and I do use it. I can't even find distilled water at the grocery store. No, no kidding. I'm like, this, this stupid, what's going on here? You can't get distilled water at the store. So I went to another store, thankfully found it. But it's like, man, the most basic stuff sometimes isn't there. So, yeah, it's not just radios. It, it really isn't. And uh, Ron and, and Don, I mean, in the UK, nice learning the backup sked. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. I'm going to look forward to that because I just really want to feel better. <sighs> I have, you know, the, the, the thing is, you guys don't know, is that I walk way too much. I do. I probably walk four or five miles a day. When I make dinner for my family, whatever, I try and take care of all my family. And I'm kind of like Mr. Mom. I've told you that before. But when I go to lay down, I have a nice zero gravity chair, but I can't stay comfortable. Usually an hour, all I get. And then I've got to get move again because my back starts to hurt down the leg. And then we go walk, walk again in all kinds of weather. And this happens all the time, even at sleep. So for me, this is a really big deal to have that surgery done. Let's get some trivia. By the way, this is the end of the month. We'll see who wins. Right now, the world's at 110. North America is at 95. Each question, we'll see how the first one goes, right? And then we'll figure out what the points can be for the second question. That way, everybody still can win the game. First trivia question of the last day of January. Before the FC, by the way, one's going to be U.S., one's going to be U.K., all right? Before the FCC instituted incentive licensing in 1967, and by the way, this is worth 25 points anywhere, okay? What additional privileges were granted to a holder of an extra class over a holder of a general class license? Okay, let's listen to the question in layman's terms, okay? All right, in 1967, before the FCC instituted their incentive licensing program, a person with an extra license, did they have a... Bigger incentive, could they use more bands than someone with just a general class? And if so, was it A, 160 meters, B, UHF only, C, VHF only, or D, none of the above? All right, so general class versus extra. Do one of these apply? 160, UHF, VHF, or not at all? There you go. First one up. William Myers, Kilo Alpha 8, Golf India Mike. He says D, none of the above, and he got it correct. It is a tie game. Wow, okay. So we've got a 110, 110 score now. Okay, no, excuse me, 120, 110. North America just took the lead. There you go. So, yeah, none of them happened. The FCC, okay, for these, nothing was different. General and extra had all of it. They really did. So if you, now, if you had put in, for example, 40 meters, different story. 20 meters, different story. But not any of these choices. That's why the answer is the way it is. Yeah. And uh, Mike in uh, Baldwin Park, California, welcome to the show. 
Oh gosh, an exercise ball? That no, no, nobody, no, no. I, I have a disc that's, that's bulged, and then a, a a vertebrae that's collapsed on my left nerve root. That would be that would be. I'd be screaming. Yeah, but thank you for the help. Adam and Ocala also had D. Andy had A. Mike had D. And Will said, guess, you're guessing. Good. Steve in the UK had D. Chris had D. Ron had A. Cliff had A. Andy had A. Steve had A. Wow, look at all these people. Ron had D. And now we've got the final question of the month of January. Let's see who wins. All right. We'll make this worth 25. Okay, it'll be the final question of the month. The last time, now back in December, remember the world won for December, but North America had won every month prior to that to August when we started this league game. <laughs> okay. Your final trivia question for the month of January. Here it is. What was the valve, which is also known as a tube, series used in the preamplifiers of the, sorry, of the power amplifiers of the KW2000 line of HF transceivers from England. So we're looking for the tube. What was the tube in the KW2000 line of transceivers from England? Okay. Was it A, the 6 Juliet Quebec 6? Was it B, 6 Juliet Bravo 6? Was it C, 6146? Or was it D, 3500Z. I'm not going to give you an easy one for the end because you're going to earn this whoever wins it. Okay. A, B, C, or D. One answer per person to start with, and we'll let you know who gets it correct. That's a pretty simple game, right? This is the final one for the month of January, and I give you this one. This is a tough one. It really is. So I'll repeat the question, and we got people answering all over the world. What was the valve, which is also known as a tube, series used in the PAs of the KW2000 line of HF transceivers from England? A, 6 Juliet Quebec 6, B, 6 Juliet Bravo 6, C, 6146, or D, 35000Z. Going all the way up the comment section, Chris, DX Scotland, with C. It's out of Scotland, so it would be for the, for the world, of course. And the world just won it again. Congratulations, Chris. You got it. Yeah, it was the 6146. That was the tube used in the KW2000 line. Transceivers. Fantastic work, man. Andy had B. William guessed D out of the state of Wisconsin. Mike had D. Adam in Ocala had C. Steve, no idea, but guessed B. Ron had D. Martin had D. Ron had D. And Michael, thank you for the thumbs up. <laughs> They're free. Thank you. That's very kind. Cliff had A. Gunter had D, Mike had C, Andy had C. Welcome. We've got a brand new one. I'm going to hopefully say this right. I don't mean to if I'm wrong, okay? Hedorum, I believe it is. Mike 7, Tango X-Ray Kilo. Welcome. Nice to have you. Thanks for coming today. He had B. Dawn in the UK had C. And uh, Chris said, I used to run the KW2000A. How about that? All right, so the world has won back-to-back -back months Congratulations to everybody around the world for winning. That's great. That's cool. That's cool. That was a good game, too, right? Because we had a 120, 110. Final score would have been 135 to 120. Congratulations, everybody. That was a lot of fun. Today's question, by the way, and we're going to change this up tomorrow. Tomorrow, remember, tomorrow is the beginning of Tell Me Something Good Tuesday, which is where you talk about whatever you want to talk about be fun. Today's topic question, what's the one country or continent you want to work? Mine is South Africa and Antarctica, because it's hard to make that call from here. Put it in the comment section, we'll put it in part of the show. Adam says, yeah, those are all amplifier tubes, are they not? Well, yes, especially the 3500Z. Very, very popular iMac tube, made for many, many years. In fact, I had one. No kidding, Adam, I had one. When I was at MFJ, they had these tubes that were in the back. They were like way off in the storage room, right? And they had all these old tubes. And I saw 300, 500Z that was defective, right? So I'm like, oh, man, can I get this? Can I have it? Sure. <laughs> and it used to sit right up there, right up there. And then one day, Larry went around that little area, and the thing fell to the floor no! and broke. I was so sad. 3500Z is a beautiful tube. It really was. Yeah. Uh, Don was thinking uh, the pre-driver, thinking of a 320. Ron said, I was thinking of a power amp, not transceiver. Yeah. that's And I caught that wrong too, Ron. So I may have misled you. 
uh, yeah, the 3500Z uh, amp output and other two are drivers, I think. Yeah, yeah. The, the 500Z is still used today in, for example, the Ameritron AL1500, which is really more like a 2500-watt amplifier versus a 1500-watt amplifier. I'm going to share with you a neat segment, and this I'm really honored to share with you. I really am. We did a show yesterday where we made a call to Kevin in Iowa, Kilo Zero, Kilo Lima Bravo. Kevin is really good at editing stuff, and you'll see his editing skills throughout this video. This is our QSO we made from both ends. So he's going to show how the signal was received in Iowa, the audio style, the audio quality, all of that stuff. And he's made a beautiful video that I wanted to share. So I want to thank Kevin in Iowa. My mate at QRP, Kilo Zero, Kilo Lima Oscar, thanks for the video. Here it is. CQ, CQ, this is Kilo 7, Hotel November, Kilowatt 7, Hotel November, calling CQ. CQ, CQ, from the Pacific Northwest of Oregon, this is Kilo 7, Hotel November, K7, Hotel November, calling CQ and standing by. Kilo 0, Kilo Lima Bravo. Kilo Zero, Kilo Lima Bravo. Station again, please. Kilo Zero, Kilo Lima Bravo. Kilo Zero, Kilo Lima Bravo. That would be Kevin in Iowa. Welcome. It's good to meet you, buddy. Hey, we're reaching all the way to nearly the Pacific Coast, my friend. Uh, probably I'd say about a three by three, 33 signal. How many, how much uh, power, power are you running over? Roger, the three, three, I'm running 10 watts, QRP, and you're coming in about a uh, five, three to five, four. QSL? QSL, Kev, thank you so much. I'll, I'll make sure to get you a QSL card as soon as I can. How's, How's the weather today in Iowa? Great Sunday video editing. And it's warmed up to about 10 degrees. I think over. Yeah, I understand. Very good. Now, are we talking on your long wire? Are we talking on a silo? Are we talking on a tractor? Maybe, a, I don't know, a, a, some kind of a farm implement? <laughs> well, we're talking on the 350-foot long wire that's tied up to the silo. Over. Uh, QSL. QSL. All right. Now, hang on, because you're a QRP guy. I'm going to go down to 10, 10 watts. watts. We'll see if you can hear me, all right? Roger, roger. You go ahead. Then, uh, all right. Ready. So we're going to go down to 10. There we go. Let's see if Kev can hear us. Kilo Zero, Kilo Lima Bravo, Kilo 7, Hotel November, do you copy over? Roger, roger. Copy, uh, good copy on you right now at 10 watts. Over. Kilo Zero, Kilo Lima Bravo, Kilo 7, Hotel November, do you have a copy? Over. Roger, roger. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bump up to 20 watts if you're having a hard time hearing me. I bumped up to 20, and yes, I do have a good copy on you, Larry. Over. Okay. Yeah, we're not getting in ten. We'll bump it up. We'll go to we'll go to thirty. Oh, we'll go to twenty. We'll go to foundation license, right? No, that's ten. Never mind. Sorry. We'll go to fifty watts. He'll hear me. He'll hear me at fifty. Kilo zero. zero kilo, kilo Lima Bravo. Kilo seven Hotel November. Do you have a copy over? Roger, Roger. I copy. Do you hear me over? Okay, Kev, it's pretty light, so uh, I'm going to give you a 73. We made the call. That's great. So, again, I got, uh, gave you a 3x3. Three three. Uh, you gave me a 54. I'll log it that way in QRZ. Thank you so much for the call. It's great to hear from you. Kilo Zero, Kilo Lima Bravo, Kilo 7, Hotel November. God bless you and yours, Kevin. Kevin thank, thank you for the call, my friend. That's Kevin, Kilo Zero, Kilo Lima Bravo. A lot of video editing there. Thanks, Kev. Thank you so much. You know, it's neat to hear your audio and how everything sounded from all the way in Iowa. So thank you. And by the way, Gunter, he's Dr. Corrector over there in Germany. He let me know. Said, no, the LL1500 never was 300Z. Remember, it's a live show, Gunter. Larry makes mistakes. It's the AL80B. So. I said AL-1500, I guess, probably, right? Okay, so, yeah, it's the AL-80B. But that's, you know, the 300Z, very robust tube. Remember, today's trivia question. What's the one country or continent you want to work? What is it? Antarctica, you know, tough one, Svalbard. And Svalbard's working right now. DX, uh, there's a DX position up there, Svalbard. As far as far north as you can go, just about. 
you know, that is actually for a settlement that's perfectly there all the time. Yeah, Svalbard. That's a good one. Jeff, already have Antarctica, most of Europe, and a good chunk of Asia. What I'm really sparse on is Africa. Only a few Cusos here in my 32 years being here. Yeah, and a lot of that has to do with the, uh, the, the small amount of HF operators that are in the African countries. So it makes a lot of sense. Jeff, thanks for joining us. Brandenburg, Tennessee. Thanks for being here. I mean, no, uh, but, but Northeast Tennessee. Right? Tennessee, I'll be right there. I I have censors on this show. The censors are after me for God's no. sakes. <laughs> Dick Scotland, Chris, thank you. It was nice to hear that cue. So thank you. And Gunter, I'm just playing with you. You know my sense of humor. I just have fun. This is a fun show. It's live. You're going to have mistakes. It happens in life, right? That's just how things go. You know, it's about having fun on the radio. Speaking of which, let's take a look. We're going to talk about the S-meter today, all right? Now, the S-meter, by the way, Ian, welcome from Holland, Mike Zero, Romeo November Hotel. Now he's in the UK. He travels a lot. So, Ian, welcome. It's nice to have you. All right, so let's take a look at the S-meter. All right. The S-meter on traditional transceivers, okay, is one of those things that can be very... It can be very, um, the right word is just escape my mind. It's terrible, too. It can be adjusted without you knowing you adjust it and it happens with the rf gain knob okay when you use for example icom says on the 7610 have the rf gain at 12 o'clock okay because that's right about the top so we go to 12 and here's rf gain okay now on many transceivers the best way to work your rf gain it all starts here to set your your meter so you get a good signal report that's the most important part your signal report is what people are telling you that they're receiving. And by the way, Greg, again, in the state of Florida, thank you sir, sincerely for, you know, the information here to do this segment. I'm going to get some uh, get some new screens up here to help you uh, with this part of the show because it's going to be really important to share. So we're going to go to some blank screens. Give me a moment. These are elements that Larry couldn't get in the show to begin with, but we're going to make sure and share them because it is important to understand the S-meter. The S-meter is... I don't know. I don't know if it's if it's a misunderstood thing or just a frustrated thing for a lot of hams because when you hear like a contest, for example, people get real frustrated because they'll say, how is everybody a nine? How can it be S9? Keep in mind, an S9 simply a courtesy signal report. You're not probably an S9, but they're giving it because they want to get the contact done and then it's over with. That's why they'll hear a lot of S9s, okay? So let's get to it right at the beginning. Signal report, okay? Strength is the first piece. The first number you hear is the signal report, one through nine. Nine can be even more. You can say five, nine plus 10, five, nine plus 20, five, nine plus 40, whatever. But it begins at nine, extremely strong signals. Eight, strong signal. Seven, moderately strong signals. And you can read the rest. Six is good signals. I know I have people here who are visually impaired, so I want to be able to say all these. Please forgive me. It's to be helpful, okay? If you're a four, fair signal. Three, weak signal. Two, very weak signal, and one faint signal, barely perceptible. And this, by the way, comes from newhams.info, okay? If you go to the website, newhams.info, great segment on this. So signal strength. When you look at the, at the meter right here, right, where it says S at the top, that's the signal strength. That's the meter you're using to be able to give these numbers, okay? That's the signal strength meter. The second part of the report is how readable you are, okay? So readability is the second piece. So if you're a five, you're perfectly readable. They hear every word. Four, readable with practically no difficulty. Three, readable with considerable difficulty. So folks that give like a three by five, that's hard to hear you. They're not hearing everything. Keep it short. Make sure you get your call sign signal report and that you get theirs and the same, and you've got a contact, and then leave it alone. Don't go into changing antennas and I'm going to bump up my power and let me, let me look at things. Just make the call, especially if it's a contest. You've got to just go quick because the people on the other end are trying to go fast too. If it's a two, you're barely readable. Occasional words are indistinguishable. Let me make sure this is, this is right. Okay. Occasional words are distinguishable. That means they can't hear everything. They're hearing most of it, but not all of it. 
okay? Then we have read, unreadable, which is one, okay? It's one. So remember, signal report and readability. Your first part is the meter, okay? What the meter says from nine to one. And here it is. See on the top of the meter, S goes to nine in white. Then it goes into the red. See, plus 20, plus 40, plus 60. And it says DB. So there's your signal strength, okay? The next part is really in your head. It has nothing to do with anything that's on your radio. There's not another number here that computes this, which is readability. This is how you feel the signal is. There might be a lot of fade in it. For that reason, you might give it a three or you might give it a two. Now, unreadable, if you're a one, be really short with your call because it's going to be really hard for the other person to hear you. Okay, there's also another piece to this, okay? The third piece to this has to do with Morse code, okay? Tone, okay? And you can see all of the ones here for tone. For a nine, and this is like when some, for, for example, in Morse code, let's say 599. Nine. This is the third number, nine. It has to do with your tone. Nine, perfect tone, no trace of ripple or modulation of any kind. Eight, near perfect tone, slight trace of modulation. Seven, near pure tone, trace of ripple, modulation. Six, filtered tone, definite trace of ripple modulation. Five, filtered, rectified AC, but strongly ripple modulated. Okay, see, it gets a little technical. Four, rough note, some trace of filtering. Three, rough AC tone, rectified, but not filtered. Two, very rough AC, very harsh and broad. Or one, 60 cycle AC or less, very rough and broad. This is if you're using Morse code. Okay, that's how the signal strength reads. So 599, if you're on Morse code, 599, you use this kind of a scale right here. Okay, if you're nine, you have perfect tone, no trace of ripple or modulation of any kind. You're in good shape, right? But what happens is people will complain, for example, if they get five nines and they're not five nines. They're not, right? When you're looking at an RST, an RST means your readability and signal strength report. That's what it means. RST, by definition, is readability, signal strength, tone. That's what it is, RST. It's pretty simple to use, but it can be skewed by your RF gain, okay? If you have your RF gain set to, to factory specs, wherever the manufacturer tells you to set it, you should be pretty close. For example, on the ICOM 7610, they tell you to have your RF gain right at 12 o'clock. Okay, so ours is at 12 here, and here is 10 meters. Now, I'm purposely not putting the waterfall there because the waterfall has nothing to do with the S meter. The S meter is readability. So as we turn a little bit, see if we maybe find someone else here on 10. That's a five. See that? The S is five. We'll try and say hello. Kilo 7, Hotel November. Let me try and go back a little bit here, and we'll be talking all over in there. A lot of people on 10. Look at that. Woohoo! It's a good day on 10. Just quick tune. Perfect. All right. So let's go back. Just call in CQ. And, and again, your readability is the top number. That's the number you're giving. So if you're hearing them at a five, but I want to show you how it changes. Let me find the signal again. It's nice that 10 is so open today, right? It's very nice. Here's another signal at 460. Since S5. But if we move up the RF gain and. David, your friend down here in Versailles. See, I'm not trying to make the call here. I'm just simply showing you the S meter. So this is a five. Can you hear every word? This is the person calling back to the guy who has frequency.
button, just watch S meter. Now, if you don't have the S meter set right, say for example, you have it down at, here he is. Adjust up the RF gain. See, if I'm at 10, at 12 o'clock, I lose RF gain. But if I go back down and I'm at 11 o'clock, if you take a look underneath the S, RF gain is now engaged, right? So the way to set your S meter up, typically with either a super hat, and, and it can be different with an SDR just because the way they work. But I found once you get a little bit of trace of movement on the meter, you give a pretty accurate signal report. See, but if you adjust up the RF gain, let's see if he comes back and we'll adjust it up. And then you'll see what happens to the S meter. This is for new hams. People don't understand the S meter and how you can adjust it and get a false reading. See? See that? The S, the, what it will do then is if you keep going up, you're going to lose the signal completely. Hold on. See? Lost him. Too high. His signal is lower than you've got the RF gain. You're squelching him now. The RF gain is really about giving a visual number based on your meter, as well as a number in your head of how well you hear them. So yesterday's show, we talked about people being very, very careful with what your signal report back is. It helps you determine how to work the person. Okay, if you're hearing a three by three, let's take a look at three by three by definition. Signal strength, three, weak signal. Okay, so you're getting a weak signal on the other end. He's hearing weak. Let's take a look at the other. Okay, three, barely readable, occasional words, sorry, excuse me, three, readable with considerable difficulty. Okay, so if you're getting a three by three, you're, it's hard to hear and kind of unreadable, right? So make it short, call sign, signal report, and you're done because the goal is to make the call, right? Listen carefully to the signal report and, and know how you can adjust your S meter because your S meter RF gain will really tweak that thing over and you get higher signals, certainly you'll hear better, but if you're really in to give an accurate signal report, it's, a, it's not the right way to do it. You have to set your RF gain in a way that the needle is just barely moving right there at the noise floor. Then when you pick up a signal, you'll hear it better, you'll be able to see it. Good example. And Mike, yeah, the preamps, you know, not on 10, not on 17, not, I mean, I don't, not 10, 17, 12, 15. It's that's, and then we came into this yesterday. I'll be honest with you. Everyone works your radio your own way, and that's perfectly fine. That's perfectly fine. But there's a lot less noise on 17 and higher. That's why your preamps are there in the first place. That's why you use them. On most HF radios, they'll tell you that when you're 17, 12, especially 15, 12, and 10, that preamps are going to be really useful for you. And that's when you use them. We had a question yesterday about that with preamps. Why is your preamp on? I use preamps to 17 up simply because there's less noise there. There's more signal to pick up. So the weak guys come in better with your preamps on. When you're on 14 meters, let's so say 14 megahertz or down, a lot more atmospheric noise, especially if you're on 40. Don't use your preamps on 40 or 80 because you'll be blown out with static. If you're using a mag loop, though, it's different. A magnetic loop only works on the electromagnetic portion of the wave. Oh, sorry, the magnetic portion of the electromagnetic wave. Therefore, it's a lower signal coming in. Then, if you're using a mag loop to be able to receive with, use your preamps on 40 and 80 because it'll bring everything up. That's how preamps are supposed to be used with a weak signal. On 10, 12, 15, 17, less noise. Bring the signal up. Let your radio work for you like it's designed to. Preamps make a huge difference when you go higher in megahertz. Let's try and make a call or two. We'll see. And let's listen real quick to this QSO. One is weak. One is not. But with the RF gain now on, if you can see the RFG light is on right below S, right? Okay. The signal street meter is barely working. If I turn the preamp off, I have the volume completely maxed. It's completely maxed out on 10. See? This is why you use the preamps here. So if we go to one, two. Oh, okay. That's Hear the difference? Good. Well, it works anyway, Roger. That's why you use preamps on higher frequencies. 
Okay, that's the reason why. You see the difference in how he came up? That's why the preamplifiers are on the radios to begin with. You can use it your own way, however you want to. But that's why they're there. Preamp 2, no preamp. Volume max, no preamp. Preamp 1, 2. If I turn the RF gate up just a little bit till it till it'll go off, right? He's probably an S5. He is. And the reason you know that you can find out if you want to by just turning your RF gate up a little bit more until you lose his signal. Okay? Whether your preamp is on or off. You just lose the signal. That's it. Let's turn it off just for just for experimental purposes because we like to do that. So we're gonna we're gonna basically we got right, listen. Kilo seven hotel November. So preamp is off, right? Volume is maxed. This is maxed out. And my, my RF gain was off. It was completely maxed. So we'll use less volume, turn the preamps on, and let the radio work for us. And we'll see if he can hear us. If he can't, we can make calls elsewhere. It's fine. 10 meters is good today. It's really good. But I didn't want to do the show with the waterfall today because this is about the S meter and how well it works, how you use it. Excuse me. I don't think he hears us, so let's move. We're going to take a good look at a busy band. I just want to make sure I not, you know, that didn't get heard. But yeah, 10 is great today. 10 is a really good band today. Try out 6, you might be surprised. 14 megahertz. I still have to listen. Sounds like he's still talking way out there in the background, but yeah. Yeah, I'm not going to QSY on that because it sounds like they're still talking. So 20 meters. Okay, notice the preamp is off. There's a reason for that because there's enough noise on 20. So without, without doing anything, we're just going to keep the S meter at 10 o'clock, okay? Now, if I move it to 11... The RF gain goes off, right? So I want the RF gain to be on. That's very important. Let the S meter just move a little bit. Just a skosh. You just want to see a little bit of movement. Let's find a signal. See, now this is this is 20, no preamp. If we raise the RF gain, see, he's right now, there's a 5, 6. This may be a 6 in a, in a signal strength. Now watch us move the meter up so it'll go to 6. It'll cut out the noise. You wait till it just chops him off a little bit. Right there. Go back a little bit in your RF gain. 75 miles from here. Just back it off a little bit. Like about one, just this one little dot on your RF gain. And you can see the S meter below. He's right at five, right? And if you take a look at the triangle that's down below where it says multifunction meter, there's a triangle there, okay? If I adjust the RF gain up, you're going to see where the triangle will cut off signal strength. Watch. See? See it move? Keep it at five. You can miss some of the signal, okay? Because he's not he's not staying at five. There's a little bit of fade to his signal. Keep it at three. There's not as much static anymore. 
But if you look at that meter, you're not going to give them a fair meter reading because you've bumped up the RF gain. See, that's what the RF gain does. So bring the RF gain back in so you've got a reasonable figure, and you can easily give them an S5 because you can see the meter going up to 5. You see, that's the, the meter reading and how you use it. Could you hear every word? Sure you could. You could hear every word of that. But if it's a weak DX guy, he's really deep out there, that's when you have to really work a radio, okay? Adjust the bandwidth down. Get your noise reduction, but don't be too heavy-handed with it, okay? And ride your RF gain a little bit as your volume knob. You may find all of a sudden that weak signal starts to come up, and you can hear them better, especially around gray line where the signals start to peak, and then they go back down. But the S meter is so important for you to understand how to read it, and also that you can skew it by changing your RF gain too much. Remember, strength is the first part. Okay, even though it says RST, okay? Okay. RSD is very different. Received and signal, signal meter and then your tone. But we start with strength. Five, nine, right? Sorry, excuse me. I'll be around. Pardon me. I just messed you up. It's backwards. Okay. So it's five by nine. If you say five by nine, it starts here with readability. Okay. So five by nine, perfectly readable to unreadable. That's one through five. So five is perfectly readable. One is unreadable. Don't give them one. If you can hear them and you can hear everything, don't give them one. Give them at least a two. Signal strength is what's on your meter, okay? But just don't mess up your meter with your RF gain because you give wrong numbers if you're really into that. Or you simply tell people they're a 5'9", and you are good, and you're fine. But there's a lot of hands that are really technical, and they want to be accurate with everything, okay? I see you right now at a 57, 57 right now here into Oregon. Okay, if you're using your meter the right way, you can, but watch your RF gain because it will change your meter. Let's take a look quickly at your comments and we will move on forward with everybody. Thanks, Peter, by the way. Al Gross is here. Good to see you. Al, welcome back. Where are you today? He's in Enos, Texas. Hi, Al. <laughs> Truck driver. That guy puts up uh, radios outside of his hotel when he makes stops. At least you're in the South. Good conditions. Tom, I love this radio. I am so grateful. Grateful to be here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let me see. And uh, Chris uses his preamp on the loop. Yeah. And that's a great place to use it. Yeah. In fact, let's talk about that for a moment. This is a good point. Thanks, Chris. Here we go. Okay. Let's listen here. We're on, we're on 14. So we're on 20 meters. Okay. We don't want to use preamps here. Let's go to 17. Listen. Just listen. Don't do anything but just listen. Listen to the sound of the radio. I'm not going to change a single thing. Listen. See the meter? Um... See it go down? Okay, so let's go off frequency on 40, on 20, excuse me, we're going off frequency here. Okay. So remember, we're touching the meter, so it's just tickling, you know, just starting to move a little bit, okay? Just starting to move just a little bit, so we can give good signal reports, okay? Let's go here so we're away from any RFI, whatever that is. So it's just moving, right? Now watch the meter we move to 17. And there's a signal close by, so we'll get off of that. There is less atmospheric noise on 17 meters. There's less. Go up to 21, which is 15 meters. See? Same thing. This is why preamps are so important. 12. We'll go back to, to 20. Okay. Preamplifiers are a real big deal when you get up like to 10 meters and stuff because the S meter is going to go down. It typically will. Now, I haven't tuned anything, so I'm not seeing a lot of change. But let me just do that real quick so that we can, we can get change in here. You can kind of see a little bit because it does make a difference. Hang on. There we go. And make sure I'm tuning. I want to tune at 10. So look at all the things fly around. All right. So now we'll listen and just listen. There's your S meter. Haven't touched it. Let's move it up just a little bit so it's got a little bit of activity just to give something, some life to it, right? Just some life to it. There, okay. Now we're gonna go to 17. And nothing's tuned here for 17, not a thing, okay? But watch the S meter once we do this. Should be fine, should, should, should drop. That was quick, wasn't it? Huh? 
and I have a I have a little issue here with my antenna on on 17. So this is not going to be a good example. Let's go to 15. See the meter go down. Then we'll go to 12. It's going to go down. See, there's 12, and you can't even hear the radio hardly. Here's 10. Can't hear the radio. There's a signal there. If you turn it up, there's a signal there. But take a look at the meter. This is a really good example of why you do use your preamps from 17 up. Because your meter is going to come down naturally. There's less QRM there. That's the reason why. So, yeah. Just a little bit of help, hopefully. Man, when you go to 40 and 80, it's jam-packed. It's huge with noise. I want to hear some noise. Look at the, Listen, even during the daytime. Take a look. Okay, so we're now on 10. And I've got the volume at this point. Uh, I'll put the volume at, at uh, let's go to 80%. Okay, down to 12. Starting to hear more static. 15. See? 18. More noise. 20. Now, 40. Okay. Looks bad, right? It looks, looks like it just was wrong to you, right? No, I wasn't. Hold on. Oh, need a little more here. Hold on. Let me get a little more power to it so it'll tune. There we go. All right. Whoops. Now, if you use a preamp here, you're going to really be sad unless you use a mag loop. Watch what happens. See that meter just pop up there real quick? There's so much atmospheric noise on 40. You take a look. It's right there at S2, but if we go to, tw if you go to 15... See what it did? It's gone. Here's 40. That's two. Even, let's go to 18, let's go to 17 meters. It's not even on the S meter. Let's go to 80, watch this. <laughs> that's um, yeah. And that's a great illustration of the noise that you get like on 80 and 160. It's just because there's more QRM naturally on those frequencies. So your S meter. Make sure you know how to use it right. Just get a little bit of RF gain on it so it'll touch the needle a little bit. The A2 works the same way. Just barely touch it a little bit so the needle's barely moving and you can get good signal reports. But don't go too much unless you want to just hear the signal more purely. But make sure that, you know, if you're going to give a signal report, have an idea of what they're at. You can find out by just adjusting the RF gain up until they don't have a signal anymore and then all of a sudden you figure that out and you're good. Oh my, let's get back to your comments. By the way, happy last day of January. <laughs> it's good to finally be all done with January, right? <laughs> okay, let's take a look and we'll see what we got for comments and we'll do our best to catch up with you. And it's good to see you on this Monday, the last day of the month. Wow, it's good. Um, hold on. Andy Bronson, Mike 7 Extra. Is that the first one? Hold on. It's RST. Yeah, RST. I said that, RST. Did someone say it wrong? Sorry. I don't know. <laughs> I've been talking. Well, I didn't mean to hog the show, dog. I didn't mean to ruin your day. I wasn't trying to. <laughs> Andy in the UK, want to work under Gunter or Larry when they're in a rowing boat in the Pacific? We'll make that call, Andy. We will. We're going to. Yeah. The urban beam, once it gets up on the roof, man, you know, it's going to be the best. And I'll tell you what, this is the truth. When I had everything up for sale, when I had the 7610, the 5000, the amplifier, I also had put the urban beam up for sale. That was the first thing I put up and the very first thing I took right down because you can't lose your best antenna. And the reason why is I want to make calls to you. There you go. Adam Tays had a topic question. My challenging country, QSO, is Japan. I have Svalbard, no Japan. Yeah, that would make sense. That would make total sense. Opposite side of the world. You guys make great calls into Europe. You guys, you, you folks in the East Coast, you take, you take that for granted. Here in the West, we have no problem making calls in the Pacific because we're right here, right? So it's the same way with you for the Europe, European continent. I'd love to change places for would it be fun adam right we took each other's shacks for like a week right we could do a week 
could you imagine how much fun we would have? Because I could work Europe then and some Africa, possibly Middle East. You could work the Pacific and, and Japan and all those wonderful places here out west. You'd do great. It'd be fun. We should, we should plan that. Hi, Cloud Thumper. It's nice to see you. That's Bob. Golf Zero, Foxtrot, Alpha Echo. Welcome. It's nice to meet you, Bob. <laughs> Cloud Thumper, he says, excuse the name. Uh, it, really, Bob, it's an honor to have you. Thank you for coming today. It's really nice to meet you. Yeah. Uh, Gunter, for the fun of the show, so I want to work the land of milk and honey. Okay. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Um, uh, Dick Scotland from Adam. 17 meters for Japanese. Hit. Yeah, absolutely. 17. Catch it, especially around gray line. Oh, man. A lot of people in Japan love 17 meters. Try it. You'll be, you'll be very, very surprised. Yeah. Uh, Larry, when's the show's about wires? Is that this Saturday? Ah, uh, no. I don't know anything about wires. Did I do something about wires? Was I talking about wires? Not sure about that one. Don't know on that. Mike, I give my cigarette report by ear most of the time. A lot of hams do that. Yeah, a lot of, and there's nothing wrong with that. You know, you figure, right, if you can hear them well, they've got a good signal, 5-9, big deal. What is, the, are the RST police going to come get you? No. Right? No, 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 Not going to happen. Give your signal report based on what you believe if you want to, or if you're really technical and you want to use the signal strict meter, certainly use it. You'll be very grateful you did. And, and but remember that RF gain knob is going to tweak it every single time. It just does, but it makes a big, big difference. It really does. Um, catching up, comments, and then we'll see if we can say a quick hello. Wow, lots of stuff. Tom, so much noise here in Bahrain. Unless I get far from the populated areas, becoming less and less locations. If anyone lives in an urban setting and have low noise, you're golden. He's right. Yeah. Urbans, urban settings are tough to work because there's a lot of RFI, a ton of electrical interference, and so therefore you're going to have more noise on your radio. It's, it's really good to get your radio out in the road. That's what Tom does. He does great with it. So that's good. Um, Martin did not have a waterfall till one years ago. I always use my ears. Me too. Yeah. I, I love this screen. I do because I don't have to worry about any waterfall, right? It's easy. It's just radio then. In fact, let's watch. We'll have some fun. Um, tens open. Don't need a waterfall. You just it's a ham radio. <laughs> you just listen. Someone there. All right. Just for fun. Here we go. At uh, 28313, check the power just to make sure and listen. So we don't have a waterfall. I'm not using the waterfall to hear or see where a signal is. I want to make sure we're not stepping on anybody. Okay, not hearing anybody. We'll, we'll tune quickly for the 10 meter band and move back to SSB. Just use a tone. That's all you need to do. Go to 100 watts. Is the frequency available? This is Kilo 7 Hotel November. ALC was a little hot. That was a little hot, so we'll go to 50% miking. Checking frequency availability. This is Kilo 7 Hotel November, Kilowatt 7 Hotel November. CQ, CQ on 10 meters, Kilo 7 Hotel November, Kilo 7 Hotel November calling CQ. CQ, CQ, any station anywhere from the state of Oregon. This is Kilo 7 Hotel November, Kilo 7 Hotel November calling CQ. CQ, CQ, any station anywhere, Kilo 7 Hotel November, Kilowatt 7 Hotel November. Calling CQ and listening. Try once more on 10. CQ, CQ, from Kilo 7 Hotel November, Kilo 7 Hotel November, calling CQ. CQ, CQ, any station anywhere. From Oregon, this is Kilo 7 Hotel November, calling CQ and listening. High SWR, don't like that. 
So if this happens and you see the SWR that high, hit your tuner button, just tune it again. Okay, now look. CQ, CQ from Kilo 7 Hotel November calling CQ and listening. See how high it was? So we're going to go off tuner. If you have an external tuner, it's where it helps. Go to a carrier mode, hit it, make sure you're using lower power, so it'll be at 30, we'll go 25%. Hit it. Let the tuner do its magic, okay? Now, don't touch the tuner button. If you touch the tuner button, you're going to the internal tuner on the rig, not the tuner that's on the radio. You don't want it on the radio. You want it going through the external tuner here, okay? So we're going to go up to 100 watts, and now we're going to make the same call and look at the SWR meter, which is the second meter, second bar graph meter from the bottom, okay? Second bar graph meter from the bottom. In fact, we'll put it here on the top, too, so you can see that, okay? Before, we were pushing 3 to 1. Let's see where we're at now. CQ, CQ from Kilo 7 Hotel November. Kilo 7 Hotel November calling CQ. CQ, CQ, any station anywhere. From the state of Oregon, this is Kilo 7 Hotel November. Kilowatt 7 Hotel November calling CQ to any station anywhere and standing by. See? Now the SWR, now that it's way down, is going through the, in, the external tuner. That's why. It's been, it's been massaged so it sees a nice impedance match. That's all it did. It just found an impedance match. So let's try again. We'll make one more call, and then we'll do it with the onboard tuner after I press the tuner button on the rig. CQ, CQ from Kilo 7 Hotel November. Kilo 7 Hotel November calling CQ to any station anywhere and standing by for a call. Okay, now we press the tuner button on the radio and watch what happens. Press it, hear the beep. The tuner button is now activated. That means the internal tuner on the 7610 is being used. Watch the SWR. It's on the top meter and it's also the second meter from the bottom. CQ, CQ from Kilo 7 Hotel November. Kilo 7 Hotel November calling CQ. Hold on. Let me use the tuner. There we go. Now watch the SWR. CQ, CQ from Kilo 7 Hotel November calling CQ at any station anywhere and listening. That's funny. This time it didn't do it. It was doing it before. If you saw it before after I tuned, it was way over SWR. There is a trick you can use with, with a tuner. Let me just listen. Is there a station out there? This is Kilo 7 Hotel November. So we have preamp two on. Try and bring the band pass quite a little closer. I don't like to go below 2.4. It just, it's really narrow. Kilo 7 Hotel November calling CQ and listening. I want to show you a trick. And, and I said, I had it backwards. And I'm so sorry. I'm not hearing anybody here. Okay. You're using an external tuner, right? So let's do that. We're going to use the external tuner. I'm going to take the tuner out. I'm going to go and use a carrier mode like radio teletype. We can even use Morse code. So we use CW. Same thing. Okay. We're going to bring our power down and we'll go down to 25 watts. Okay. Click the tune button on CW, right? Okay. If we try radio teletype, same thing. So we're good. Use a carrier mode. That's the main thing. Now, once you've done that, if you press your tuner button, typically the radio is already seeing a really good impedance from your external tuner, right? If you press the tuner button on your radio, it'll work now, okay? That's a trick for you. If you haven't ever seen it before, we'll, we'll change frequency, show you real quick. We're on 12, okay? Let's go here. Here we are on, on 12. I want you to see the SWR because that's where we'll start. We'll bring our S, we'll bring our, our S meter down so it's just tickling the surface a little bit here on 12 meters. Okay. Not using the, uh, we're not using the external tuner. We have, we're going to use the internal tuner and see how well it does. Let's take a look at the SWR. All right. Checking frequency availability. This is Kilo 7 Hotel November. See, the SWR is beautiful. Okay. Kilo 7, Hotel November, QSY. So we're going to go down from 12. Let's go to 15. Haven't tuned. Tuner disengaged. Let's see the SWR. 
Checking frequency availability, Kilo 7 Hotel November, okay? So now we've got basically a 1.4, 1 1.3 to 1, right? So if we, and we're using the external tuner. If we, because remember, man, uh, auto tuners have memory, so they know where your impedance should be matched. We've just activated the tuner in the radio now. This is like fine tuning an old television set. Watch what happens. Watch SWR now. Checking frequency availability, Kilo 7, Hotel November. See how it's flat? That's tuning your radio even more. So when you use an external tuner, if you're using an auto tuner, all right, again, memories are there. But if you then touch your radio and tune the tuner and let it tune, you're going to bring in a better SWR. Let's try it one more time. We'll do it on 17. We have our whistler. There's the whistler. Congratulations, you're a whistler. Okay. So we're at uh, 137. Okay, we'll check our SWR real quick. Checking frequency availability, Kilo 7 Hotel November. It's almost touching 2.5, right? Somebody close by. We got to change. Okay. Same thing. Checking frequency availability, Kilo 7 Hotel November, 2.5. All right. We're going to go and use quickly, and, and keep in mind, we're, using, we're 25 watts. We're just going to tune. <laughs> now somebody's here. Okay, so we're going to move away. We'll get it done. I just want to show you this illustration real quick. That's all. There. 5688. Okay. So you use an external auto tuner, right? And you're, the, let's say you're on a band that your radio, that you're, that you're, um, that you're, you're, you're not quite resonant on. Okay, so you're using an auto tuner to clean it up. Okay, so we're going to do that here on, on 17 meters. We're going to hit a carrier mode, let it tune. Okay, just did. Okay, now we'll take a look at the SWR. No tuner engaged on the radio. It's going directly through the MFJ998 tuner, okay? Checking frequency availability. This is Kilo 7 Hotel November. So about a 1.3, 1.2. Almost perfect, right? Now, you've adjusted it through the auto tuner. Press the tuner button. See, watch what happens now. Take a look at your SWR. Checking frequency availability. This is Kilo 7 Hotel November. See how it didn't move a bit? It's That's how you could really get the most out of your external tuner and your radio. Kilo 7 Hotel November QRT. We don't need to make calls. This was about trying to explain a few things. S-meter and also tuners. Well, you can use an auto tuner as well as preamps. We covered a lot in this show. You realize that? We talked about preamps. Preamps are great. 17, 15, 12, and 10. They're really good for you. They'll help you bring up the signal, right? That's where you don't usually attenuate stuff. Use your attenuator on 80, 75, 40, and sometimes 20. You know, I get that. But your preamps are helpful higher, okay? We also talked about the S-meter and the readings, what they all mean. Remember, the first part is your readability, right? So how well are you being heard? Five through one. Listen carefully what they tell you. If it's a low number, keep it short. Make sure you just give them your call sign signal report. Make sure they get that and you get theirs. Call is made. Congratulations. Your S meter, one through nine. Extremely strong signals at nine. One faint signal, barely perceptible. And believe me, you can make calls with an S zero. Gunter's done it here. We've seen him do it. I've done it many times. S0 is possible. So if it's a zero, be honest, it's a zero. If you're on Morse code, that last number is here, nine through one. Good rec you know, just good reference for you and how it works. We also covered auto tuners. Auto tuners and how they work, right? They have memories. Memories are there that they'll remember your antenna, what the impedance match is, so you don't have to worry about, you know, transmitting, okay? If you still want to use it, you can still do it, but then use your radio tuner to fine-tune it. You'll get the SWR even lower if you do that little trick, okay? I hope some of this helped. I really do. And also remember, there's a lot more noise on the lower bands, especially 7580. Noisiest band there is, 75 and 80 meters. You're down at 3.7 megahertz. There's a lot of noise there, a lot of noise. But you go to 17 meters, not so much noise. 
You guys have a good Monday. Congratulations to the world. The world has taken the January championship for 2022 in the trivia game. Let me get your final comments. I do appreciate you all being here. Safe travels to Al Gross. Thank you for coming today. Also, uh, Ron, as every s meter are not set to a standard, so they aren't accurate. That, you know, there's a lot of truth to that. There really is. And a lot of s meters have calibration screws on them, too. That's a good comment, Ron. It really is. If you're running most modern software-defined radios, your S-meter is simple to tune. Just follow the manufacturer's suggestion. What they say on ICOM is turned to 12 o'clock, but what happens is the RF gain light isn't on. So you want to have RF gain there. That's going to help you maintain a very steady audio coming into your ears. RF gain is important, but once you change that, it starts to bring the S-meter up, okay? But if you want to use like a squelch control, if you guys said S7, right, <laughs> move out the, all the static, just go to seven and you'll hear them beautifully. So it really works great. So, um, Chris in uh, Scotland, I'm using the DX Commander Classic. Yeah, that's the antenna. Yeah. And Tom, yeah, <laughs> there you go. And it's already February in Bahrain. Congratulations, you made it. One more month of spring, mate. One more month. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Chris in Scotland, oh, okay, I thought it was resonant. That was resonant all bands. No, 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 no. No. On the DX Commander, and this is important because we have someone who's interested in buying it. You build it the way you want. You build it based on the radials you want to put on it. So your radiators, if you want to work 40, cut it to your specs. You know, 300 divided by frequency for metric, 468 divided by frequency, or 234. If you want to build a quarter wave, which is what the DX Commander is, 234 divided by the frequency you want to work and make it that long. Fold it over on itself. I use two inches extra here in the U.S., so again... Two, three, four to buy a frequency, add two inches, fold it over. You've got a nice place to attach the hook to be able to mount the antenna. But make it the frequencies you want to use, and you'll work great. You really will. But what happens is, like on harmonic frequencies, say, for example, when you're on a 40-meter element, right, you're using third harmonic, that's 15 meters. So it's not going to be perfect. The auto-tuner helps, but then to fine-tune it just a little bit more, hit that tuner button on your radio. Man, it makes a big difference. It does help. Yeah, it does help. And welcome to you, Ishmael, Dominica. Welcome, Ish. Good to see you. It's nice to see you. Al uh, Gross, uh, that's the edge. Of, that's one of the cool things about ham radio on the road. When I set up, I never know what to expect. That adds to the fun. It's pretty cool. Unless there's like snakes out there. No. 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 It's Chris, so I'm 59 plus 60 tonight. I'll take that, mate. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And Gunter, I agree. You know what? I, I grew up without waterfalls. We all did. Didn't we all? It's handy to have, right? It, a waterfall is beautiful to have because you know right where the signals are. If it's a contest or whatever, you know, you can find signals quick. For like YouTube shows like this, right? I can find signals. Oh, there's one. Press on the button and then all of a sudden you have audio and hey, everybody's happy. We get to hear somebody make a call. But this was more about really showing you ham radio because we don't all have waterfalls and quite honestly i love the listen i don't like to find it by waterfalls just one of those things yeah yep yep see swr high use your auto tuner first then tune in with your manual tuner you'll get it beautiful you'll beautiful yeah and yeah 7300 memorizes the pre-tuned bands on a given antenna but remember when you change antennas it's not there anymore because you've changed antennas. Different impedance, right? So you've got to learn those new uh, and those new impedances if you ever swap antennas. Keep in mind, one of the things you do, especially if you have an auto tuner, for example, because you have like thousands of memories in them and they work brilliantly quick. If you'd go out and you change your antenna and you don't keep the, real, the first one, right? Erase the memories. Just erase them because you've got to build new memories up with a new antenna now. Different impedance, completely different impedance. Let the auto tuner learn the new impedances for your new antenna if, when you swap them. Very good stuff. Dirk, welcome. Papa Alpha One Bravo Delta. Hello, mate. Good to see you. And yes, there's another comment. Waterfalls distract you from good listening. And good listening is the best habit you can have. Remember yesterday's show? Where is it? Here it is. First one. Listen, right? Ham radio is so much fun. I close my eyes when I tune. That's not true. I close my eyes because I'm trying to hear better. It gives me the opportunity to focus on nothing but the signal and what's out there. You'll find a lot of good DX on that. 
Tom from Bahrain, I'm thinking to cut one of my 20 meter mobile antennas for 15 or 17. Thinking about this today as 15 and 17 are alive these days. I worked UK on 15 a few days ago from the car with my MFJ 1979 shortened out. Yeah, there's some good stuff. Good stuff. Uh, Mike, you should add the cable from the radio to the tuner and then you can just use the one button the radio. Um, yes, if you have a, if you have a connecting cable right from your radio to the tuner, to the auto tuner, it will auto tune through the radio. Simply press the tuner button on your radio and it will do, but then press the second time. Why? Because Mike, it's a different set. You've got the auto tuner solution for your impedance, but then the, it's a smaller impedance, you know, match too. You've got like a gap like this, right? Then use your radio to make the gap like this. That's why the SWR went to zero. Okay, the, the other two is going to find one SWR match. Your radio is going to tighten up even more. That's why every time I did that, you saw the little SWR still, and it went to zero. Even with that cable, you still are going to tune it a second time because the radio gets a chance then to tune it. That's why I don't use the connecting cable. To be honest, I don't. I try to tune first to the other tuner naturally, and then I use the internal tuner and the radio secondary because it'll bring my SWR down to basically nothing every time. That's why. Yeah. Chris, 7610, very nice radio. We've come a long way since the... Oh, gosh, yes. Oh, yeah. A lot, a lot better. No question. No question. Um, going through your final comments. Tom, I enjoy 17 meters. But normally on 17 meter static mobile. Wanna work 15 and 17 one with 17's great. And yeah, the best part, no contesters. That's right. It's good. Yeah. I must be way behind the comments. Martin, happy Whistler Day. No kidding. And Kent, thank you. Kilo Alpha 4 Fox. Sorry, Kilo Alpha 4 Fox right indeed. X-ray. Thank you. It's good to see you. I'm glad you were here. Uh, Cloud Thumper, could you just use the radio tuner without the external one? Will there be any loss of using both? It's an excellent question. Let me show you real quick. Here we go. Okay, so we're going to do this. Love good questions like that. We're going to way up. We're going to way up on uh, 20. I'm oh, sorry, on 10. Way up on 10. Okay. We're not going to tune. We're going to right mode. All right. We're not going to do anything. Let's just, let's just see if someone's there. Okay. And watch the SWR. And that's going to be on the top meter, too. Is the frequency available? This is Kilo 7 Hotel November. See how awful that was? Awful SWR. Now we'll try and just use a tuner. All right. Now we're still going to have SWR. That's a real quick tune. I don't think we're going to get good SWR yet. We'll try it. We'll see. Is this frequency available? Kilo 7 Hotel November. Don't want to hurt my finals. You can see it's still in infinite, right? You see that on the SWR at the bottom, it was infinite. Now, we'll put in the external tuner, okay? We'll go to SWR, and again, the meter's SWR. We're going to be tuning at 25 watts. So here we go. We'll click the mic. It'll find a solution, which it did, all right? Now, the auto tuner found a solution that the radio didn't because it's too high for the radio to calculate a three to one mismatch. That's why the SWR was so high on the meter. Let's take a look at it now without fine tuning yet. Is this frequency available? This is Kilo 7 Hotel November. Perfect SWR. However, you still can tune now. See that? The radio wouldn't tune before. Now it does. Is this frequency available? Kilo 7 Hotel November. What you'll find with that what you're going to find with that is you're going to find that you're going to have a little bit more power coming out because you tune that second time. You may get like, you might see on the PEP, like 75, 80. The next time you start peaking at 100, that's what the difference is. That's a great comment. Thank you for saying that. Well, but there any loss to using both. I find the tuner helpful for bands that the radio will not tune because it's higher than three to one. Then I will use the auto tuner on board the radio to fine tune it and get a little bit more power out of it. That's how I do it. Everybody can use radio their own way. It works for me. It just does. John, welcome. K2, Oscar, Oscar, Lima. Good to see you. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Good to see you and good night to you. Good, good rest. Tom, turn on the preamp, bend the attenuator and see who wins. I got the 991A attenuation wins. Yeah, attenuation will win great, especially on louder bands. But I would never use an attenuator personally on probably 17, 20, sorry, 17, 15, 12, 10. It just... Yeah. 
Unless you've got two guys real close, I wouldn't see any use to attenuate because you've got a quiet band. It's just me. Sweden, that's a new one. Robert Westman, welcome. Sierra Mike Six, Union Union Juliet, welcome. Nice to meet you, Robert. Thank you for coming today. And Ian, thank you. Thank you so much. Jeff, we will get that call. We will. Absolutely. All right. Been a long call. Been a long week. Been a long show. So there we go. Um, let's see. Hmm. Gunter, MFJ Auto Tuner is having memory issues on and off. MFJ 93 was the same. My 998's been brilliant. I don't know. I've had good luck. 9998, 993, 969, all worked great. So, yeah, I've been, I've been very blessed and grateful. Um, truly have been. Uh, but he says, but all in all, I love that sneaky little box, right? It is. I don't just be fun. I Phil. Kilo Oscar for Oscar Golf Juliet. Thank you. I love the 7610 too. Very grateful to have it. And uh, Chris, thank you. I do too. I love the meters on. I like to use a radio like this. I, I For this radio, for the 7610, I like this. I don't have to look at a waterfall. I can just listen and I can make calls. It's brilliant. The most important thing in the radio is your S meter. It's right there. It's a meter. It'll tell you if you got too much SWR. It's going to tell you if your ALC is okay. It's going to tell you how your power is going. It makes a big difference. You know, not the waterfall, but the meter. You do everything that way. Adoram, thank you. From Ireland. I'm sorry, is that Ireland? Yes. I, Mike Seven, Tango X ray Kilo. Thank you very much for coming tonight. I appreciate it. Sorry, it's so long. I am. I'm sorry the show's so long. It's a long show. I don't think I've done a show in a long time. Hour 30. Man. Yeah. So we talked about S meter, how to read it, even for Morse code. We talked about how to really tune your radio. We talked about preamplifiers. It's a lot of show. Until we meet again, folks, please understand, you can get your ham radio license. I know this was confusing, a lot of stuff that might throw people, but don't let it throw you. You can get your license. This is stuff you learn as you go in ham radio. My gosh, I didn't learn this my first day. It took a long time to get here. You can get your license. Contact someone like the Wireless Institute of Australia. Wonderful group there. www.wia.org. Hit the contact us bar. They'll send you a ham radio club close to where you live. You get to know them. They'll help you get licensed. And then you learn ham radio. And that's the fun part. Until we meet again, mate, wherever you are, thanks for watching Ham Radio Live. It's my honor and privilege, and I mean that, to do this show. Until we meet again, have a wonderful last day of January. February, and then spring is coming. Bye, everybody. Estás viendo Tele Isla, Canal 7, WSPE, Ponce, San Juan. Super 7 concluye la transmisión de este día. Somos Super 7, WSPE TV, Ponce, San Juan, Puerto Rico. Super 7 está orgulloso de servir a la isla entera de Puerto Rico. Operamos en el Canal 7 desde cuatro transmisores localizados a través de la isla con el permiso de la Comisión Federal de Comunicaciones en Washington, D.C. En Super 7, su opinión es importante. Necesitamos y recibimos sus comentarios y sugerencias. Envíelos al gerente de la estación a WSTETV, Callbox 15096, San Juan, Puerto Rico, 00902. A nombre de todos los que elaboramos en Super 7, le deseamos muy buen día.